Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your boy Jamal. I hope you guys are all doing well. Now, for those of you guys that don't know me, in front of me is my 2003 Corvette Z06. Now, as you can tell, the car is very modified and I'm coming up on six years of ownership of the car. Uh, and so in this video today, I wanted to go over the five must-do mods, in my opinion, for the C5 Corvette. Um, now, this car is a Z06, but all the mods that I'm gonna list out in this video today uh, are applicable to any C5 Corvette model. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it and start off with number one. So here we are inside of the car for modification number one. Now, this is one of the first things I did to my C5 Corvette when I got it, and that is the shifter in the car. Now stock, I found that these cars uh, come with a kind of sloppy shifter, if you will. It's not very tight. It's kind of too tall for my liking. Uh, and that stock C5 shifter just doesn't give you um, that really good driving feel that you want out of a car like this. So um, there's a few options that you guys can do uh, on the shifter on this car. This, the one that I have, is a C6 shifter. This uh, specifically, I believe, is out of a C6 Corvette Z06. Um, and this shifter is just better in every way if you ask me. It's shorter, it's got a more solid feel to it, um, and it really kind of slides into gear, and it's a little bit of a medium throw, if you will, between the stock shifter and like a short shifter. So there is still a little bit of throw in it, but not so much like there is in the stock shifter. There's also a couple different options that you guys can go with. Um, there is MGW, they make a short throw shifter. Um, that short throw shifter is kind of a favorite amongst all Corvette uh, drivers. It's a very solid shifter as well. It's got an insanely short throw um, for those of you guys that are trying to increase your shift speeds. Um, but it is a little bit pricier than say like a C6 Corvette shifter, but it's one of the best uh, shifters in the game. So uh, if you guys want to spend a little bit of money on that shifter, I definitely do recommend the MGW. Um, the flat stick or just the regular MG, MGW short throw shifter, both very good options uh, on these cars. So here we are again inside the car talking about number two, and number two is probably one of my favorite mods uh, that I've ever done to this car, uh, and that actually has to do with what I'm actually sitting in. Now, if you guys might not have noticed by now, these are not the stock seats that come in the car. C5 Corvettes are kind of notorious for the bolstering in the seats going bad after you put any type of mileage on the car. My car when I bought it had 135,000 miles on it and the stock bolstering in the seats was almost completely gone. Um, the leather seats to me are just very slippery. You're all sliding around them. Um, and when you're in the corners, you're trying to enjoy your car, the last thing you wanna do is be sliding around your seat, uh, kind of impeding your uh, experience when it comes to driving this car. So what I went with in this car is a uh, Corbo A4 racing seats. Uh, these are a bucket seat with a reclinable back. Um, there's a bunch of different options when it comes to racing seats that you can do in these cars. There's also the Corbo Evolution X. Corbo to me is a solid brand. Uh, they're kind of a certified racing seat there. It's a name brand. Um, you just have to be careful when you get aftermarket seats because you definitely don't want to get uh, a knockoff seat that will not protect you in uh, a case where you wreck the car. So these are Corbo A4s, Corbo Evolution X. They make great seats as well. Um, Sparco is also a great aftermarket choice for those of you guys looking for seats. Um, these have uh, cloth on them, but they also come in leather uh, and there's different colors too. So you guys can kind of uh, pick and choose what you really like in this uh, uh, seat. Now one thing you also might notice is these seats are uh, compatible with harnesses, uh, but I just use the sock seat belt. Um, but definitely the seats were one of my favorite mods I ever did to this car. And when you're really in the corners, you're driving hard, uh, the last thing you want to happen is to be slipping around in your seat. Um, and these uh, Corvo A4s definitely hold me in nice and snug um, and allow me to really enjoy the car uh, when I'm kind of leaning on it. So here we are sitting on the ground for number three. Uh, on the must-do mods for the C5 Corvette. Um, and this one is probably the most overlooked thing that uh, people think about when it comes to modifying cars, but that's actually the tires on the car. Now, as you guys can tell on my car, I have drag radios on it, but that is only because my car is so heavily modified uh, and it makes, uh, it makes about 470 wheel horsepower. So uh, I needed all the grip in the rear that I could get uh, in order to put that power to the ground. But 
Uh, a lot of you guys that might be buying a Corvette for the first time, a lot of people for some reason don't like to drive these cars and you might be buying a car that has very low mileage. Now, when you buy a car with really low mileage, that means that it hasn't been driven much and it's been, chances are it's probably been sitting in the garage for a while or sitting wherever it has sat for an extended period of time. Um, and while the car sits, the tires continue to age. So you wanna make sure and check your tires uh, to see how old they are um, and to see if they need to be replaced. When I bought this car, the tires that were on it were super hard um, and had very little to no grip left on them. First things I also did was replace the tires um, and just by play, uh, putting a new set of tires on the car, it really woke it up. It gave it that grip back uh, and it made it much more enjoyable to drive. So definitely do not overlook your tires when it comes uh, to modifications for this car. Um, you can easily tell the age of a tire. There's a DOT number on every tire that's sold in North America. Um, let's see if I can find it here. So DOT CX 5K on this one. Um, and then all, oftentimes there's a stamp on the very end of that DOT number with four numbers on it. And that fir the first two numbers of the four numbers is a week and the last two numbers is the year. So you'll have uh, the week it was made and the year it was made. Um, and if it's not on this side of the tire, it's on the other side of the tire. So um, I can tell you though that these tires were purchased in uh, 2018, so they're only three years old. Um, but the tires that were on the car were almost eight or nine years old and they, hard they harden over time um, and just kind of lose their grip. So definitely don't overlook your tires when it comes to modifications on these cars. Now for number four, now that you guys have a shifter in your car, you've got some seats to hold you in, you're really enjoying the drive of the car, um, the number four thing I would recommend that you have to do for your Corvette uh, is definitely lower the car. Now these cars from the factory sit way too high up in my opinion, um, and they make it so easy to lower the car. The car comes with factory lowering bolts uh, that you can just turn and to get it dropped in the front and the rear. Uh, now, one thing to mention is that uh, the factory lowering bolts do have a lot of adjustability in them, but if you want to um, kind of really dial in the specific uh, ride height setting and you want better feel than the factory leaf springs, you definitely could upgrade to coilovers. Um, my car is slammed to the ground, obviously. Um, there are a few things you need to remember when you do lower the car. Obviously, when you lower the car, the ride is going to get a bit harsher. Um, you're going to have to be careful when you're driving on speed bumps, potholes, dips, anything like that. Um, and you also have to make sure that you get your car aligned whenever you change the suspension geometry of it. Because when you lower the car, it knocks everything out of, out of whack. And you definitely want to make sure it's aligned so that you don't prematurely wear your tires. Now, my car, for those of you guys that might be wondering, is lowered on factory lowering bolts in the front with the rubber bushing that is on the bottom of the lowering bolt completely cut out. And then in the rear, uh, I have aftermarket uh, lowering bolts in the rear and really they're just longer bolts to help the car get more low. Um, so definitely my car is slammed on some uh, 17 inch uh, wheels and tires. Um, for those of you guys that are also wondering, 275, 40, 17 in the front, 315, 35, 17 in the rear. I have a video where I go over my wheel specs, so definitely check that one out. Uh, I'll link that one down below. Now, number five on the must-do mods for this car was definitely kind of a harder one to think of, uh, just because it wasn't so obvious, uh, and you are kind of getting into uh, a little bit more of a major modification. But number five, I would say, is long tube headers uh, for the C5 Corvette. Now, there are plenty of long tube header options that you guys can do on these cars. My car has one and seven eighths Hinson headers with an off-road X-pipe, um, definitely for off-road use only. And that modification really wakes the car up. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that when you do put long tube headers on the car, you will require uh, a tune. Um, so you definitely want to reach out to some of your uh, local tuners and talk to them, consult with them on the kind of headers that uh, you might go with. If you're going through a shop, it's kind of a really involved install on these cars. Um, so if you don't do it, to your, uh, if you don't do it yourself, definitely consult with your shop uh, on what brands they recommend. Another thing to keep in mind is that since you are tuning the car um, with the long tube headers, it might also be smart to get a cold air intake at the time. 
um, just so that that can also be tuned in uh, when you tune uh, for the headers on these cars. So as I mentioned, my, I have one and seven eighths, uh, one and seven eighths Hinson uh, long tube headers on this car with a black ceramic coating. Um, and I definitely bought these used. Headers can range anywhere from seven, six, seven hundred dollars, anywhere up to like seventeen hundred dollars, depending on which ones you get. Um, Hinson's a good brand. Uh, also, Texas Speed is kind of a cheaper option. I did hear that they do require some modification uh, when installing them, um, but it's definitely something that I've heard. I don't have any experience with them. Um, Cooks is also a good brand to go with. Um, and if you want to shell out some cash, American Racing Headers definitely makes a really good product. Um, but just remember that when you do do headers on these cars, it's going to require a tune. Uh, and if you're going to go through all the trouble to tune the car, you might as well throw a colder intake on it as well. For those of you guys who are wondering, uh, tune for headers is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $500. So um, with the tune, uh, with the parts, uh, and the labor, if you decide to pay for it, it can get pretty pricey. That's why I did think pretty hard about what I wanted to do. But these cars with just that intake tune and exhaust, they drive phenomenal. Uh, and it's really fun, especially if you've done kind of the previous mods that I mentioned. You've got a decent set of tires on it. You've got a nice shifter in it. You've got seats to hold you in place. The car is lowered. You've got a lower center of gravity. Uh, and then with the intake exhaust and tune, it really wakes the car up and it makes for a super awesome driving experience. Uh, and you'll actually be pretty surprised with how much horsepower this car can pick up just with a set of long tubes in the tune. And that's gonna do it for this video, folks. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Now, obviously, the five must-do modifications for a C5 Corvette uh, is completely subjective. And the five points that I made in this video are uh, things that I think are must-do mods for your Corvette. If you guys are watching this video and you have a C5 Corvette, comment down below what your five must-do mods are. And definitely be sure to check out some of my other videos that I have on the C5 Corvette. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.